If you have served in the military, would you raise your hand? Come on, anyone who served in the military, raise your hand. Hi, come on. <coughs> well, all right. Now, for the, the rest of us, the respectful response when we learn that someone has served in the military is to say, thanks for your service. Thanks for your service. Your service to this country. Your service to country has assured our freedom. And for that, we're grateful, aren't we, for um, those who served in the military. And as we've heard, though, in the song, Gotta Serve Somebody, we're all serving something question is, what's guiding your time? What's moving your values? We're all serving something, whether it is a noble ideal or serving self or serving others. It may be the devil. It may be the Lord, but you're going to have to serve somebody. Well, it is clear from Scripture that the idea of who we are serving did not originate with Bob Dylan, God bless his soul, or with the Sopranos, but in the Bible. The Bible warns us that if we're not acting out our faith by taking a leap for others in serving others, our faith is wanting. James says, faith by itself, if it is not accompanied by action, is what? Dad. I don't know about you, but that is a harsh statement. And I, I think it's harsh for a number of reasons because James seems to be saying, you say you believe, well then you better do something about it, but yet our acceptance and love by God isn't because we have done anything, it's because of what Jesus did, and by faith we enter into that. But here we find of all places in James, this epistle that Martin Luther called the epistle of straw, he personally had a hard time with that verse because all of a sudden, it's, you better do something about your faith. And if you're not having fruits in it, then you have a toxic faith. Or we hear about fake news. I think James would say it's fake faith. If there's no works in your life that connects to what you've received in your heart from a loving God. Now taking that kind of action in our time and in our day, that could be a real leap. Because it's hard. A leap of faith by reaching out to others. So, why is that important? Why do you think it comes up in James? And as Jackie said, James was primarily written to a Jewish community. They, they understood the whole idea of, of serving and connecting that with our faith. And the reason it is important is loving God and that great commission, great commandment, love the Lord your God with your heart, your mind, your soul, loving others as Jesus told us to do, it is the healthy way to live. You want to be healthy? Do that. Uh, a pastor friend of mine was counseling a woman who was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. 
And she was powerless against a multitude of problems she faced. And she asked her pastor, what can I do? And he replied, well, if I tell you what to do, will you do it? They had been close enough to be honest with those kinds of questions. And she said, yes, what can I do? Well, he knew that her schedule included some free time during the week. He also knew that she loved to cook. And he said, here's what I want you to do this week. On Monday, I know you like to cook, bake some bread. Then Tuesday, I want you to go to the nursing home. Go into the community room of the nursing home where people are watching television. They're playing checkers in some games. And just go to that room and start passing out pieces of your bread and sit around and talk to people. Even if you don't know anyone, don't worry about it. They'll get to know you. You come in with the bread. Do that on Tuesday. And then on Wednesday, bake some cookies. And then... On Thursday, I'd like for you to go to the children's hospital. Talk to a nurse. Find out what kids there needs to have a cookie and a visit from someone who cares. And then I want you to come and see me on Friday. Well, it was obvious that she left the office that day and she just didn't think much of that plan. Just didn't seem to make much sense. And the following Friday, she didn't show up for their scheduled appointment with the pastor to see how it went. And it was actually about three weeks later, she came to see him. And she said, sorry, I haven't been back sooner. I've been working at the cancer center every day. And I've been so busy that, that our, our Sunday school class, they, they join me and they, they, we've taken this project together. And I've just been so busy. I'm sorry I haven't been able to see you. And then he paused and he said, tell me, how are you doing? How is everything? How are you coping? And she said, coping with what? Everything's fine. All those things that I seem to be so overly worried about, in, in, in a respect, they, they, they kind of dropped off my radar. Remember Jesus said this, whoever loses his life for me will find it. We see glimpses of that, what we've heard with the Stephen Ministries. Those who have uh, said, I'm going to carve out a 50-hour training experience so I can serve others to reach out. We see that in the service team that we heard about last week. And also in caring, as we heard from the fellowship team today. And if you think of all the missional teams of our church that, that we're seeking to have persons get involved in, they are reaching out and caring and serving. They're making that kind of leap. And we see that principle of doing that at work. When we lose ourselves in the service of others, it puts our faith into action. And as you read the Gospels, you'll see again and again how Jesus challenges us to vote our lives to others. He equates serving others with serving God. Listen to his words. He said, truly I tell you, whatever you did to one of the least of these brothers and sisters of mine, you did it for me. Could he be saying that one of the ways that we prove that we love God is how we love others and care and get into their world? 
Do you want to come alive spiritually? I think we all do. You wouldn't be in church if you didn't realize that we're not just physical and emotional people and psychological people. We are spiritual persons. And to become alive spiritually, and if we want to put our Christian life in overdrive, then put that practice that Jesus talked about into service. Jesus said, the greatest among you will be what? Your servant. Your servant. So, this is what I really want to get at this morning. And that is, what does it take to become that kind of servant? Because we all, we got to serve somebody. So what does it take to be a servant of Christ? And that is the opportunity that is before us. There are some things that I want you to take note of. First of all, to leap beyond what I would call your perceived limitations. If you want to experience this kind of servanthood that we find in the scriptures. And when I talk about our, our perceived limitations... I know people who will not get involved in serving because they believe they're just not good enough. As if we have to have this, this, this good factor among us to be any good to others. They're waiting to rid themselves of a personal flaw before they feel they can begin to help people. It doesn't work that way. I thought about that this week. And a case can be made, and I have observed that God uses imperfect people. He does. Have you ever thought about all the imperfect people that are really our heroes? We think of them, not in their imperfections, but the joy they brought in serving God. Jacob was insecure. Joseph was abused. Moses stuttered. Samson was codependent. David had an affair and all kinds of family problems. Jeremiah was depressed. Jonah was reluctant. John the Baptist was eccentric. Peter was impulsive and he was hot-tempered. Martha, Martha worried a lot. She worried a lot. The Samaritan woman had several failed relationships. Zacchaeus, the tax collector, and thinking of tax this last week, he was unpopular. Thomas had doubts. Paul had poor health. And Timothy, Timothy was timid. That's quite a variety of misfits, isn't it? Misfits who found the joy, found that way of serving. God used each of them in his service. And God wants to use you too. God has something for you. And the simple truth is, if you want to come close to Christ, serve some others in his name. And that'll, uh, that'll excel it. Find a team to serve on in church. Find something to do in the community and do it for the glory of God. Do not let your limitations stand in the way. Wipe that off on this day. Say, Lord, imperfections at all, here I am. Here I am. And then next, take the leap of faith by, I'm going to use this phrase, but I have to, have to, uh, give a little definition for it, by being a team player. Now, when I say being a team player, what I'm getting at, that doesn't mean to be a conformist, okay? doesn't mean be a team player and don't 
come out with ideas and challenge things. I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm wanting to get at is <laughs> I read a, a humorous article about um, what colleges and universities are doing now about dealing with their enrollment. And the story of a young man who, who wanted to go to college and his heart sank when there was the question on the application and the question was, are you a leader? Okay. Are you a leader? This youth was, was honest, he was conscientious, and he wrote simply, no, not a leader. Probably wasn't the answer he thought they wanted, but he was honest. And he returned the application, and he was expecting the worst kind of response. And to his surprise, he received a letter from the college. And this is what it said. It said, Dear applicant, a study of application forms reveals that this year our college will have 1,452 leaders. We are accepting you because we feel they must have at least one follower. Isn't that great? I love it. He was honest. We need leaders. No question about it. But we have teams, and the teams select their leader who really just keeps things moving forward. But they can't all be the leader. They have to guide and inspire, and we need to have team players. We need leaders who can lead because they're willing to also follow, to stretch themselves, to, to take some of their, those things that, that, that where they need to grow in some of those edges and allow God to do that in their life. And, and when I think of that, I, I also think of the late Leonard Bernstein who directed, as you know, the, the, the New York Philharmonic. And he had a great answer to the question. The question was, what is the hardest instrument to play? Was it first violin? Was it the piano? What was the, the most difficult instrument to play? And here's what Leonard Bernstein wrote. There are plenty of people who want to be the first violinist but to find someone willing to play second chair. In any section of the orchestra is a problem, but without a second, there's no harmony. See it? And servant leadership, servant action is empowering. So when you look for opportunities to serve others, remember that role that we can have as team players to be a part of the group and move forward with it. And then next, take the leap of faith by turning wherever you are right now, whether you are gainfully employed or looking for a job or retired, turn where you are, where you are into a place of service. Of course, we believe in foreign missions. We, we, go to, we support things in Africa and Nicaragua and, and many other places, but obviously we need to be missionaries at home, wherever we are, that it may be a place of service. Wherever you are, you have an opportunity to serve our living God by serving others. Offer where you are to God. And say, Lord, here I am to serve. Look for opportunities to serve there. And I encourage you to do this, to define your life then by the benefits that you bring to others. To define your life by the benefits, not that you've done for yourself or your organization, that's good, but to also have an element of your engagement, of your years that God has blessed you with, to how 
have I been able to be a benefit that I brought to others? I know a, one financial advisor. He said, I bring people to an early retirement by helping them reach their financial goals. Isn't that great? Help them a little better there. Or a teacher could say, I don't just teach. I help children build a future. That's what you do in the classroom. Some of you may remember Bev Zilsdorf. Bev was here on Easter morning for the sunrise service. She had a walker. She was here last Sunday. And she's one of our, our homebound members. And, 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 and you know, Bev, she, she's with us online, but she just can't, she's just not here all the time the way she used to be here. And, and she, was, she was with us from the very beginning. And I love Bev's story. And if you've ever been for about 20 years at the Ronald McDonald's on Mayfair Road across from the mall. Bev worked there for over 20 years. And she had this big smile, and I love what she said. I cook burgers for all those stressed out people who deserve a break. And she had this wonderful smile, and she was always filling people's coffee cups up and, and just patting them on the back and, and it being an encouragement. She was able to be more popular at that McDonald's than Ronald McDonald. <laughs> Bev, and I, when I see her, I just have to give her a hug and say, gosh, I miss going in and seeing your face and having a burger. <laughs> Serve God in your workplace. So... Define your work also by the benefit it provides for the glory of God. Pursue it as a way of serving others. Because remember what Jesus said, whoever loses his life, that is to serve, for me will find it. We serve him by serving others. Whether you did it for the least of these, he said, you have done it unto me. So, energize your spiritual life through service and by forgetting your limitations, by being a team player, and by turning where you are into a place to serve. Jesus elsewhere said, by your love, they will know you are my disciples. Not by a building, a building addition. That's good. We need it to part of our ministry. But that's not what is going to turn people to Christ. What's going to turn them to Christ is our simple acts of caring and loving. And doing it in the name of and for the glory of our Lord Jesus Christ.